It is June 21st, Friday evening, around 7 o'clock p.m., and it is about 75 degrees. I just want to walk through the garden and show you guys what's growing, how things are doing. Um, my Boston Pickler Cucumbers are doing very well. I've already picked a couple. They were about 3 inches long. So I want to try to get those now while they're young. We can clip them off and get those producing. This is the Chelsea's Prize. I hope to grow that up this archway. I'm also doing that in the center of the garden. We'll see how that works out. That's the long English cucumber. That is really good. I grew it last year. So hopefully this year I'll have the same luck I did last year with it. Um, these are Kentucky green, wonder green beans over here. So those are doing fine. I went ahead and strung up all of my arches to give everything something to hang on to. Um, all of my heirloom tomatoes are doing wonderful. The Jersey Devil over here. And this is a hybrid pink girl over there, the Amish paste. Then I'm growing some wax beans. Let's see. I think I have a few wax beans over there. I have some royal burgundy bush beans. And then I have over here is an Italian yellow bean. And on the inside of it are like little black peas. So it's kind of interesting. I've been harvesting a lot of kale. Still, the kale's coming in. I've been harvesting a lot of lettuce up in my container garden, making salads. And I've been cooking some of these rat's tail here. As you can see um, the pods on there. And I want to say and describe the flavor of these. It's kind of like a bitter cucumber or an arugula. Um, don't know that I'm really crazy about the flavor, but. Um, I cooked it with a little bit of um, sauteed purple onion and some garlic and red pepper flakes, ginger, and something else. But anyway, I knew that way. It ended up being really good. And so I enjoyed that. I'll probably grow that again. Um, even though I'm um, not real crazy about the flavor, but it grows, seems to be very hardy, produces a lot of pods, and the beneficial insects like it kale there, some more kale. Started to have a little bit of worms on there about three days ago and I removed them all instead of spraying them with BT. I, it was just easier just to go ahead and take them off because I kind of stopped the infestation and now they're growing real well and I think BT, you know, it just kills the worm on the leaf and that's, um, that's kind of disgusting. I don't really want to eat the leaf with dead worms on it so I just picked them right off and it was fine. I only have about 12 plants to, to deal with so that made it a little easier. I pulled out all of my Red of Florence onions and I um, all of my sugar snap peas and I moved some things around, putting in some pepper plants and things like that. Um, more kale. This is my son's square foot garden. Doing well. Um, more Kentucky Wonder Green beans. They have grabbed on to the um, string I put on there and they're real happy. Um, down here. I uh, have some of the Juliet tomatoes ready to pick. I picked a couple of those last night. Let's see what else we have going on. Um, <clears throat> over here um, I put in some zucchini. This is black eel and they the seeds have sprouted on there. I'm starting to get the true leaves of that. The calendula looking really nice over here. I moved in another galangal plant and it seems to be doing a little bit better here than the one that I put in another bed over there and I'll show you that in just a minute. I moved a Cherokee purple tomato plant here and it, um, it seems to be an okay. I moved this four days ago and it showed a lot of signs of being stressed the first day or two um, because it's just so big when I moved it and it had some fruit on it already and everything. And so I'm hoping it'll hang in there and do okay this summer. We'll just have to keep an eye on it. All right, here's the Chelsea's Prize here, working its way right up the arch. And there's my other Chelsea's Prize that I planted two weeks after the first one here. Now the first one is I'm um, producing a lot of cucumbers already down here. 
you can see these looking pretty good can't wait to pick those and lemongrass is coming back just fine right there and let me see what else I can show you here I'll show you the pepper plants um, have a lot of hybrids and I picked two peppers last night off of this giant Marconi they weren't very big they're a little bit bigger than the one that's on there now if you can see it but um, I want to go ahead and get some of those off of there so we can start producing some more flowers and I have a serrano pepper here I have a three um, open pollinated um, this one is a uh, you see I can't pronounce the name of this pepper <clears throat> show you the um, name there it is right there and then over there is jackpot and over there I think is rainbow blend oh that's emerald giant sorry and so we'll see how all those go <clears throat> all right and then over here this Thai squash pumpkin seems to be doing real well starting to sh shoot out some vines here on the side and then over here I had a pretty bad problem um, and I had forgotten about it <laughs> but my plants reminded me real quick I had bacterial wilt in here last year and I lost my tomatoes and sunflowers that were over here they just wilted right over and died and that's what happened to my tomato plants that I had here in my last garden tour video um, I had a real healthy tomato plant called a Marion it was doing great my Thai pink egg that I grew from seed was over here and they wilted right over and so I pulled them out as soon as I noticed what was happening because I recognized it from last year and the same thing happened with a beefsteak tomato that I had here last year as well and <clears throat> I had two tomato plants here last year that both suffered from the bacterial wilt This is Uncle Mark Bagby. It is wilting over just like um, the other one did that I had here. So I guess it is water because it shows a lot of stress in the middle of the day. And when I water it, it does pop back. Um, I just don't understand why the soil is not retaining more moisture down there. I've got it mulched and I had a pretty good um, amendment of, of uh, soil in there. So I don't know. I have to give that a little more attention. The same thing's happening over here with the Golden Jubilee. It looks much worse than that one. And if you know about bacterial wilt, it's very, it can be devastating for a garden. It's a bacteria in the soil which chokes off water to your plants. And so you'll really start to notice it once your plants get um, big and established and they really start requiring more water. Okay, so this is um, the bottom stem of this plant and you see it's drooping and it's starting to droop here now it's moving up the stem and it's moving up to this one uh, earlier today when I was out here at the garden at around three o'clock it was just starting on this limb here I mean and so over here now it's drooping on this one so I am going to go ahead and pull this out right now and get rid of it and I don't want it sitting in the garden overnight either so I hate to do this but Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. They'll start to wilt over in the middle of the day and watering doesn't help them. But like at night they seem to recover a little bit and then the next day again they go they wilt over again. It uh, can spread throughout the garden really fast so I'm having to be very careful anytime I work in this bed here um, with my tools. I soak them in bleach when I'm done. I keep my gloves washed. I try not to cross contaminate anything from this garden with uh, in this bed with anything else in the rest of my garden um, because this particular bacterial wilt is the one that affects tomatoes, potatoes, peppers, and sunflowers. So just about everything you want to grow in the summer. So um, there's another one that affects cucumbers, but I don't haven't seen any problem with my cucumbers yet. So I'm hoping just to keep it contained over here, even though I'm disappointed that it's even here. <clears throat> There's not a cure for it. You can't really do anything for it. However, you can make the bacteria less happy by making your soil more acid. So I'm going to try to do that. 
add some more, maybe some peat to it. See how that works out over time. All right, I've been collecting a lot of uh, spotted cucumber beetles, about two a day for about the past 10 days. And I'm going to church again this evening. That's when I found they're most active. However, I have found one or two in the mornings. And I'll just go take a peek underneath all these leaves here in a few minutes and see if I can find any. And I've just been sliding those right into a little pickle jar. And I think I found one bean beetle. But I was real happy that I found a couple of the beetles that were mating. So I got them before they laid eggs. And that's really what I was after. If you just look every day, you can usually get them before they start laying eggs in your garden and then you have a real mess on your hands. Okay, I want to show an example real quick of cucumber beetle damage. It's a spotted cucumber beetle. There's two different ones. One has a stripe and then the one that I have in my garden is spotted. You'll notice some of this damage here and it is old damage. I'd say this is probably about five days old, okay? So whenever I'm doing my inspection, I will look for damage on my leaves and anything that looks what's called skeletonized is where I need to start checking first. So I just found some a minute ago and I thought I'd show an example. What you'll do is look at your leaves and skeletonized is right there. That means your leaf is, is uh, the leaf part's missing, but the veins are still intact. Okay, so this is fresh damage because usually um, it's all dried up if it's older damage. So now I know that there's probably a beetle under here. Okay, here's one right underneath this leaf here. You can see him. There he is. Okay. Okay. There they are. So overall, everything's doing okay. Um, except for the bacterial wilt, which I've kind of got under control, and I had it under control last year. Um, and I'm harvesting a lot of things, sugar snap peas. I've cooked all those up, and I've been freezing kale. And I've been harvesting some red potatoes that I got from another area that I'm growing them in bags. All right, so hope everyone's having a good gardening season out there. And thanks so much for watching.